This is the presentation of Conrad Dale, and we are his audience. <laughs> Business speech, Catholic Priest by James Dale. And I looked to see the boys that stayed with me, and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell as feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars which thou sawest are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Revelation chapter 1. Since Jesus Christ calls the seven churches seven stars and seven candlesticks, it is appropriate that according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the duties of a Catholic priest are also numbered by the number seven. They are seven sacraments or mysteries or gifts. Eucharist, baptism, confirmation, anointing of the sick, confession, matrimony, and holy orders. Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples right before his crucifixion on the Jewish Passover. It is written, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. After this he took the cup, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the cup of the New Testament of my blood, shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Matthew chapter 26. Priests say these words of Jesus over bread and wine at church, making them to be his flesh and blood. It's written in Hebrews, when Jesus called the cup the New Testament, he made the law of Moses the Old Testament. Baptism is needed for our souls as a sacrament because Jesus after he resurrected from the dead, commanded the disciples to baptize believers, and priests are the successors of the apostles. It's written in Mark after Christ resurrected, Go ye forth and preach the gospel to every living creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. At an Easter service I recently saw, believers were baptized by the priest by the priest splashing holy water on their head three times and saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. According to the book Possessed, holy water is one of the main tools to exercise demons, and also the rite of baptism is considered in the Catholic Church to be a rite of exorcism. Confirmation is another sacrament which involves instead putting holy olive oil upon the head of the believers. This reminds us of the scriptures in which the kings of Israel were anointed with oil to be made kings of Israel. And indeed, the word Christ means the anointed. A good scripture I think of in regards to this is in John's letter. The anointing which you have received teaches you of all things. That's in 1 John chapter 2. Similarly, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick involves anointing the believer with oil. Only it's applied when the believer is very sick or near death, typically. It used to be called extreme unction. A scripture of this is in the book of Mark, describing Christ and the twelve disciples' mission. It said, And they cast out many devils, and anointed oil many that were sick, and they healed them. That's Mark chapter 6. Next, I'll discuss the sacrament of confession. People often say, How can a man forgive me my sins? Yet, Jesus Christ, when he resurrected from the dead, gave the disciples the power to forgive sins. It is written as he appeared to them at the end of John's Gospel. And Jesus showed unto them his hands aside, and he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, which means forgive, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. It's John chapter 19. Thus it is we can receive forgiveness of sins, both from Christ's flesh and from confession. Next, to discuss the sacrament of marriage. Marriage is when a man and woman come together in a holy union, which is meant to be permanent. Jesus Christ described this in Matthew 
chapter 19, he said, He be not read, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and for this cause shall a man leave his wife, leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Next, and finally, I shall discuss the sacrament of holy orders, which I've been studying at FSCJ for. It's when a man is made a priest after completing his studies, the bishop lays hands on him. The scripture that most reminds me of this is in the Last Supper, according to John. Jesus said unto the disciples, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit. This is my commandment, that you love one another. When describing my ambition to Father David, I told him, I idealize the Catholic priests as they who fulfill the two great commandments most. Jesus said, the two greatest commandments are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, and to love our neighbor as ourself. Here's a picture of Judgment Day by Adore. We need to love Jesus with all our heart, because we will be resurrected from the dead as he was, and be sent to either heaven or hell.